Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's the uh, day after Labor Day, September 3rd, 2024. And here are some of today's trends in the news. No Trends Journal magazine this week. We're taking a break for Labor Day week. And again, we're giving you with nothing nobody else in the world has given you when it comes to trends. But anyway, on to the markets. Not a good day. Labor Day, by the way. Labor Day? You know, it was plantation workers of slave land. Here. What labor? Labor Day. The chains own everything. You know, it's disgusting. You look at the data. You know, when I was a young guy, all the polls used to show that the future will be better than the past. And now it's the opposite because the big zone, everything, Labor Day. Anyway, Slave Day. The markets, as we keep saying, things change after the summer holiday. And the summer holidays are over. And it hit the markets. NVIDIA plunges, NVIDIA plunges almost 10% dragging basket of chip stocks to worst day since March 2020. Huh. March 2020, when the scumbag whore organization, who, what, WHO, World Health Organization, called it a pandemic. On March 11, 2020, when the grand total of 4,219 people died out of 8 billion Oh, all you Trump lovers? Yeah. March 2020, when everything's going down, that's when the March, uh, let's see, Friday the 13th, Black Friday. Don't be racist, Salenti. Can't call it Black Friday. Okay, we'll call it uh, Neutral Friday. Black Friday, he declared a state of emergency. Yeah. That's where the markets are right now. Everything was crashing. Knocked off almost $300 billion in market cap. But don't worry, they're still up 118%. And let's see, the Dow Jones fell 626 points, 1.51%. The S&P down over 2%. The NASDAQ down 3.26%. The market... Initially took the leg down Tuesday morning after two readings of manufacturing production, so it signed a weakness. No fucking shit. Manufacturing production has been showing signs of weakness now for years. And not only in the United States, globally. S&P Global showed decline from July to August, while the Institute for Supply Management came in under the level anticipated by economists, gamblers. This data reignites concern around slowing growth with the U.S. economy. So, you think they're going to lower interest rates? You bet they are. And again, the lower interest rates fall the deeper the dollar declines. And the deeper the dollar declines, the higher gold prices go up. Remember, top trend, 2024, a golden year for gold. While others said this, no magazine in the world predicted the global, global golden year for gold, 2024. Gold prices are up almost about $450 an ounce when we made that forecast. So you subscribe to the Trends Journal for the grand total of $2.50 a week. But you could also get the Wall Street Journal. This is a um, weekend edition. $6. How about that picture on the top? Isn't that something you want to know about? In Paris, everything's going swimmingly. China's Joe da ba 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 competes in the mixed 450M freestyle 20 points. 
heat on Friday. I mean, look, look at this. Look, what, what, what do I care about this shit? I need economic data. Fuck you, Salenti. We're just selling shit because we're shitheads. All right. <coughs> Going on. This just came out. Single bid offer for office in Canary Wharf. Skyscraper. Left empty since COVID. Canary Wharf Group received a single bid for two floors in a flagship office tower, abandoned during the COVID crisis. Abandoned because scumbag politicians locked down nations. Calling it a pandemic when the grand total, what, about 6 million, 7 million people died? Have a period of three years out of uh, 8 billion. And 2.6 of them had pre-existing comorbidities. You should see the people uh, where I am over here in Kingston. Everybody, as I said, the, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus went out of business. You don't have to step right up, step right up, see the fat man, see the tattooed lady. Yet everybody, if I was elected president, I have a fat tax. The more you pay, the more you weigh, the more you pay. These people are going to end up in hospitals. Oh, not my data. CDC. 61% of the 1 to 17-year-olds that were hospitalized for COVID were obese. All right? Don't talk about natural healing. You're not allowed to do that. So anyway, the skyscraper is left empty. <clears throat> yep. Yep. The London Financial District developer is in the early talks at the University College by the unleasing floors 48 and 49 is flagship of uh, yep. Six some 16 floors of the 50 story tower are listed as available for rent. 16 stories. No one's talking about the banking crisis. No one anywhere, any place other than the Trends Journal. And when you're looking at the data here on the markets and what's going on, gold, oh, how about oil prices, huh? Brent crude took a big hit today. Brent crude is now selling for around $73 a barrel, down almost 5%. A couple of weeks ago, Brent was selling around $80 a barrel. It's going down because the markets are going down. And these are the facts. Yep. And by the way, don't forget, we're having that peace rally up here, September 28th. We've got to get as many people as we can. You go to OccupyPeace.com. OccupyPeace.com. It's only, you know, a couple of weeks away. And again, peace is the spirit of God. And the government is the enemy of the truth. And the truth is the enemy of government. And anyone that doesn't believe in peace, to me, they're a piece of shit. Turkish growth at its weakest since pandemic. Again, they keep using the word pandemic. This is the Financial Times today. Again, there's a global slowdown. That's why you're seeing Brent crude go down so low. This could be the beginning of a market crash. If the markets crash, Trump will win. If the equities stay around where they are, he won't. But remember, they're going to lower interest rates. And the lower interest rates fall, the deeper the dollar sinks and the higher gold prices go up. This is from Haharetz. Shin Bet chief warned Netanyahu of imminent war before October 7th. We've been saying this for how long? As I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. People forget. People forget the 39 weeks of protests that were going on in Israel. 
because of his Judicial Reform Act would have kept him out of, out of jail. Hamas attacks, everybody forgot all about it. Netanyahu says hostage murders prove need for unity in existential war against Iran. This is from the Times of Israel. What did Iran have to do with this? And again, the media coming out of the Persian and Arab nations are saying that the hostages were killed by Israelis when they blew the shit up out of everything. That's what they're saying. So who do you believe? U.S. Defense Secretary to Gallant. Gallant. Hamas leaders must be held accountable for vicious, illegal, and immoral executions. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told Israeli Defense Minister Gallant that Hamas leaders must be held accountable for the vicious, illegal, and immoral execution of six Israeli hostages. Six. You know, it's all the news. Yeah. New York Times. Israeli hostages are found dead and anger rises. Oh, that was yesterday. Oh, big, big front page over here. Look at this big picture. Look at this. A funeral was held on Monday for Hirsch Goldberg, Poland, 23, an Israeli American whose body was found. Yeah. How about, how about At least 49 Palestinians were killed on Sunday. Hundreds over the weekend. Nearly 41,000 officially dead. Nearly 100,000 seriously wounded. Legs, arms blown off. According to the United Nations, not United Nations, Lancet, they expect over 125,000 Palestinians will die. But one guy dies. That was a hostage. And it's two days, three days, four days of front page news. Palestinian lives don't matter. Netanyahu pushes back against new pressure over Gaza and hostages. You ready? This is AP, Associated Press. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Monday, yesterday, push back against a new wave of pressure for reach ceasefire. In the first address since Sunday's mass protest or huge protest showed many Israelis furious response to the discovery of six more dead hostages. Netanyahu said he will continue to insist on a demand that has emerged as a major sticking point in talks, continued Israeli control over the Philadelphia corridor. In other words, stealing more land. He said, no one will preach to me on this issue. No one will preach to me. I'm the head over here. Nobody can tell me anything. I'm in charge. All you people are a piece of shit. No one will preach to me on this issue. Gantz, Netanyahu isn't telling the truth that he will bring the hostages back alive. Netanyahu has continuously delayed deals to release the hostages. At a press conference Tuesday night, head of National Unity Party, M.K. Benny Gantz, lashed back for the insistence of Prime Minister Netanyahu to remain in the Philadelphia corridor. Gantz said 
that the prime minister's arguments are, quote, weighty and some are meaningless. It didn't surprise me because during the time we sat in the war cabinet, Netanyahu delayed the ability to move forward with the hostage deal steadily. This isn't reported, by the way, in the American media. Netanyahu rejects pressure to reach ceasefire deal. And this just came out. U.S. appears to walk back final offer ultimatum, urges flexibility amid Philadelphia impasse. And this is from Haharetz. Netanyahu just mapped out how Israel will rule Gaza forever. They don't want peace. He wants more war. And again, whatever country you're in, the politicians running the show, you know the way I feel. Hey, politicians, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? That's the arrogance. And you get your shirt, you go to Trends Journal, and you hit the shop, and you get all different kinds. And that's Netanyahu's attitude. Nobody's going to tell me what to do, he said. I'm in charge. All you people are nothing more than pieces of shit. I'm the top politician. And last week, or a couple of days ago, Kamala Harris, or as my friend Mark Bronstein, Mark Bronstein, Mark, 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 he rest in peace, Mark Ferrara, the hairstylist of the cars, the stars, he calls her Kamala, Kamala Hilarious. We have to get the deal done. This is August 30th, meaning the hostage deal. This war must end, and we must deal that is about getting the hostages out. Hmm. I'm unequivocal and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and the ability to defend itself. Same. Same. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Only Israel has the right to defend itself. and. My unequivocal and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense. Hey, Miss Hilarious, put on your costume and go over there and fight. Send your money or shut your fucking mouth. Anybody that supports the wars, go over there, Ukraine, wherever you want to go, go fight, go send your money, send your wife, your kids, your transgenders, everybody else, or shut your fucking mouth. This is the politicians. Love war. The people want peace. Yep. Yeah. How about stop slaughtering the tens of thousands of Palestinians? No, no, no. And, and how about stop bombing Gaza into ruins? No, no. We'll give them all the weapons they need to do it. Yep. Now, this is terrible. And it's only going to get worse. And by the way, they're cr clamping down now on the colleges, trying to stop them from protesting. And we said this is going to start ramping up big time now. And this goes back from, um, when is this? May 27th. Trump tells donors he will crush pro-Palestinian protests if reelected. If you get me reelected, we're going to set the movement back 25 or 30 years. Trump replied, according to the Washington Post, the former president and Republican nominee called the demonstrations against Israel's war in Gaza as, quote, a radical revolution. Addressing the meeting in New York. Yep. Trump heard one donor complain that many of the students and faculty academics taking part in the protests could in the future hold positions of power in the U.S. I mean, this is the bullshit. No, it's serious. And then, you know, they had that election over there in Germany. And it says Germany's old wounds exposed after far-right populists triumph in the, in the East. We've been forecasting now for some three years, four years, that you're going to start seeing a lot of populist movements going on.
These are the people that were anti-vax. Anti-establishment. Anti-immigration. The countries are being flooded with immigrants. Because when you look at the data, companies are going, countries are going bust all over the world. Africa, Latin America, people escaping lack of basic living standards, government corruption, crime and violence. They're going to do anything they can to escape. And then the people in these countries, Italy's a whole different place now, as times there. They used to be Italians. Germans were Germans, French were French. And now, again, like it, love it, hate it. We only call it like it is. That's what it is. So the people of those nationalities have had enough. So you're going to see more and more of these elections. And again, this is a time for peace. If we don't have peace... It's going to be hell on earth because you have, I'm giving you the data of the, of the Ukraine war. Oh, they, they escalated bombings in, in deep into Russia. They bombed a nuclear power plant, which the, the atomic energy commission or the UN, whatever, which one it is said, this is really serious, but it's not being reported at all. And we've been warning about this for over a year and a half as Ukraine keeps losing, going to ramp up deep, hitting deeper and deeper into Russia and Russia is going to hit back harder. So that's where we're at with all this. And again, please do what you can. Support us. Go to OccupyPeace.com, OccupyPeace.com. Put your money where your heart is. And please come here on September 28th. We changed the time. We're going to start at 2 o'clock. We're starting early. And we're doing everything we can. We've got music, entertainment, and great speakers. So thanks for tuning in. And we're going to take a break this week, so I won't be doing the judge tomorrow. But we see you Thursday. Ciao, ciao.